There have been many movies, documentaries, articles, and even an opera on Eileen Warnos. She was featured in an Academy Award movie called Monster, which was well acted by Charlie Theron. Her character was featured in American Horror Story Hotel as a dinner guest on Halloween. These are just a couple of the different versions we have seen of the American serial killer. But who was Aileen Warnos? Was she really the monster that she is depicted as? Or was she a woman who became a killer due to all the sad events in her life? On February 29, 1956, Eileen Warnos was born in Rochester, Michigan. Eileen's mother, Diane, was only 14 years old when she met Eileen's father, Leo Pittman. The two eloped, and Diane gave birth to Eileen's older brother and Eileen. Her child-molesting father committed suicide in prison, where he was serving time for kidnapping and sodomizing a child. Eileen would never meet her father. Eileen's mother seems that she couldn't handle taking care of two children, so she left them with her parents, Lori and Britta Warnos, who adopted the two. In her early teens, Eileen began drinking and using drugs. It was around this time when she was 13 that Eileen was raped when she was hitchhiking back home from a party. Eileen became pregnant and was sent to a home for unwed mothers. She gave birth to a boy who she gave up for adoption. After giving birth, she went home. Her relationship with her grandfather, Lori, started deteriorating and she became a chronic runaway. After her grandmother, Britta, passed away, Lori's patient with Eileen became thin and he kicked her out of the house. To survive, Eileen had multiple jobs as a waitress, maid, pool hustler, and prostitute. At the age of 20, Eileen arrived in Daytona Beach, Florida. It was also at that time that her brother died of cancer at the age of 21. She decided to marry a 70-year-old man, but that marriage only lasted one month. He was abusive and would beat her with his cane. At 22 years old, Eileen shot herself in the stomach after a breakup with her boyfriend. In 1981, when Eileen was 25, she was arrested for robbing a convenience store for only $33. She went to jail for 13 months. After her release, she stayed out of trouble or just didn't get caught. When she was 30 years old, she met 28-year-old Tyria Moore. Aileen started working as a prostitute to take care of Tyria, who she said was the love of her life. A year after meeting Tyria, in 1989, the killings began. On December 13, 1989, Richard Charles Mallory's body was found in a wooded area. He had been murdered on November 30, 1989 by gunshot wounds. Richard was a convicted rapist. In a letter to one of her friends, Aileen claimed that she murdered Richard in self-defense. She says he tied her to the steering wheel of his car and raped her repeatedly. The rape caused her to take a break for six months because she says, he tore me up bad. On June 1, 1990, David Andrew Spears' body was found along a state road in Florida. He had been shot six times. Police told David's ex-wife, Ima Spears, that David and Eileen seems to have gotten into an argument after drinking all day. Eileen says that he tried beating her to death with a lead pipe, while his ex-wife says he was a gentle man. The third victim was Charles Edmund Carscato. His body was found on June 6, 1990. Charles had been shot eight times. There were witnesses in this murder, and they said that they saw Eileen driving Charles' car around. The fourth victim was Peter Abram Seams. Witnesses saw Terry Moore and Eileen Warnos abandoning Seams' car. His body was never found. On August 4, 1990, Troy Eugene Burris' body was found by a family on a picnic. He had been reported missing on July 31, 1990. He had been shot twice, once in the back and the second in the chest. The sixth victim was Charles Richard Dick Humphreys, and he had been shot six times. Dick had been shot in the head as well as the torso. The last victim was Walter Gino Antonio. 
On November 19, 1990, his naked body was found in a logging road, and he had been shot four times. The police started looking for a woman. The reason? The men were shot in the chest. Criminal profilers said that when men shoot people, it is usually in the head. Eileen had left her fingerprints in almost all the crime scenes. Therefore, she was quickly linked to the murders. On January 9, 1991, Eileen was arrested at a bar in Harbor Oaks, Florida. The police threatened Tyria that if she didn't cooperate with them and get Eileen to confess, she would go to jail. Tyria agreed and begged Eileen to tell the police everything. Eileen confessed in a three-hour videotaped confession. Eileen would tell a friend that during the interview, she was going through withdrawals. Tyria became the start witness for the prosecution during the trials. It is also said that the police and Tyria became co-conspirators to profit off of Eileen's story. They never did when this story came out that they were trying to profit. In 1991, 35-year-old Eileen was adopted by 44-year-old Arlene Prowl. Arlene said, We just want Lee to have a family who cares about her and is not going to hurt her. She has a heart of gold, and even after all she's been through, she's given so much to me. Arlene's husband, Robert Prowl, was concerned that his wife had a sick obsession with a serial killer, as well as running a $4,000 phone bill. However, in the end, he supported his wife and became Eileen's legal father. She was indicted in the five counties that the murders took place, Volusia, Citrus, Marion, Pasco, and Dixie. The first murder that Eileen went to trial for was Richard Mallory's on January 14, 1992 in Volusia County. Eileen claimed she murdered Mallory in self-defense when he tried raping her. She screamed to the jury, I'm innocent. I was raped. I hope you get raped. Her position fell apart when her videotaped confession was played and her family testified for the prosecution. One of them even said that Eileen had never been abused. 13 days later, on January 27, 1992, the jury found her guilty after 91 minutes. Eileen was sentenced to death. The death sentence will also be given for the murders of Dick Humphreys, Troy Burris, David Spears, Charles Carscadden, and Walter Gino Antonio, six death sentences. She was never charged for Peter Sims' death because his body was never found. Eileen pled guilty to six murders. She changed her story and said she had robbed the Met in cold blood to buy herself a place for her partner and her. She was also trying hard to get the death sentences. Even though her lawyers tried to appeal those death sentences, she was not for it and was trying hard to get the death sentences and be executed. Before being sentenced at one of these trials, Eileen told the judge, Law enforcement has labeled me a serial killer purposely for books and movies. I'm no serial killer. As with other female killers, Eileen underwent a psychiatric assessment. However, unlike other ones, hers only took 30 minutes. Her attorney said it was an extraordinarily brief undertaking. Eileen Warnos was executed in 2002 and was the 10th woman to be executed in the United States and the first one since 1976. Earlier that year, Eileen wrote a letter that said, I'm one who seriously hates human life and would kill again, keeping her alive. People who opposed the death penalty thought this was just a political attempt by Jeb Bush to boost his popularity. Since her execution, Eileen Warnos has become a martyr for some. Many feminists wrote to her, and some even marched with banners that said, Free Aileen Warnos. I have wondered why Aileen has become a cult figure, being that even though she was a serial killer, she didn't kill as many people as other female serial killers out there. It also didn't make sense why everyone labeled her the first woman serial killer in the United States. As with many things in the media, it was all to sensationalize the story. I think the first victim, Richard Mallory, did rape her, and this caused something inside her to snap. All the years of being abused by men caught up to her. Eileen had a sad life filled with trauma and abuse. This might be why she was begging for the death sentence so she could die. 
Her 30 minute mental exam was a sad injustice and I can see that there were many who wanted to profit off her story instead of trying to help her. Even so, this does not excuse her murdering those men. However, I now understand why Eileen has become an infamous serial killer who is still talked about today. Her story combined with her interviews just cause you to want to learn more. I feel that her story is not talked about in the way it should be. It should be a story to help sex workers. Too many sex workers are raped, abused, and murdered every day. No one cares because people look down on these women and men. It is rare a sex worker who becomes one just because she loves sex. As Aline, a person becomes one out of desperation. If you have never read Lost Girls in Unsolved American History, then you should because it tells the stories of the sex workers who were murdered by the never-caught Long Island killer. Instead of being the victim like those poor sex workers, Eileen became the predator. However, in the end, she was also a victim herself. Thank you again for joining me and learning more about another female killer. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I post a new video. Thank you again, and I'll talk to you next week.